Hi, I'm here with Artificial Intelligence. How are you doing, guys? Alright, not too bad. Cool. Getting things started. We're in the studio right now. How did you two get together? Uh, I'd already like set up a little studio in my house, like it was just in my bedroom with a couple other friends of mine. We got a few bits of studio equipment together and put it all together. And we was developing our skills and Glenn was sort of around, you know, DJing at the time and was like cutting all fresh beats, like not just from me but many other people that he knew that wasn't really known in the scene but they was still like sort of up and coming producers that are around today still in it, like you know, big names now, you know. But um, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, he was into what we was making as a DJ, and we was into, you know, his styles of playing. How are things going on the DJ front? DJing was the first, my first thing I really loved it, and got the adrenaline rush from, and all that. And I spent like years as a bedroom DJ, buying all the records, hanging around all the record shops, and all that. And then I got to the point where I, I knew I was a good mixer. But it, and I could get up for tunes as well, but it took more than that to get into the industry. And for me, it was a logical progression to actually just go and start doing production. How's your style developed over the years? It's gone from left to right to dead centre and back again, yeah. Whole spectrum. Yeah, all these changes. Don't ever want to be branded on the one thing, because that's the one thing. Well, definitely not. We're not just like the more funk, whatever liquid, whatever you want to call it. We're not that. We're not just the jump up. We're everything. We're throw down. Throw down. Yeah. <laughs> is, that, is that your term for it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everyone's using jump up like a yeah. negative term now, so we drop that and we call it throw down now. Yeah. I like. That. <laughs> How did you get involved with free recording? How did we get involved? Initially, it was the first couple of tracks we've done. Everyone, which Marcus signed. Brian rang up. He was kind of straight on it, like within a few weeks, and was saying, "What is this track? Is it signed? I love it." And originally, that was the first track he signed. And then he said, "Do a B side," and we were saying, "We don't do B sides, Brian." And we came came with a, the next A side. The A side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what about your releases um, before your affiliation with V? Well, what, what releases did you have? Commercial Suicide, which was Soul Good and Embrace. That that kind of came out the same time as Everon, which was in Solar. They were the initial two releases that kind of made our name amongst the underground. So you've been around since, you know, pretty much year dot in drum and bass as, as DJs. And a lot of your new fans might not realise that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, I've been through every level. I've been here from year dot as a punter, then as a wannabe DJ, as a producer, you know what I mean? And coming back as a, a proper DJ now, you know what I mean? So, but I mean, I did do my, my fair share and so did Glenn fair share of DJing before even AI came about, you know what I mean? If it's a hard graft, you do all these things and you don't get noticed, you know? That's that's what happens, you have to really fight against sort of the masses. Everyone's trying to get the spotlight for something, you know what I mean? And you can't just be a good DJ and a good mixer and go and play to a crowd. That, that same crowd will probably forget your name the next day, they were all so drunk, you know what I mean? So mm. it takes more than that to sort of sustain and push your name further in the industry, you know? Do you believe in the saying, the quicker you get something, the quicker it goes? Yeah, there's a, there's a level of truth in that. You learn from small mistakes, yeah? I could do a mistake where my progression's been slow, yeah? And it will only cost me a few hundred pounds and I will know never to do that same thing again. Whereas when someone's gone really quick, that few hundred pounds has turned into a few grand and it's, that, that could damage them, you know what I'm saying? So I could just pick myself up and keep going, but to them, that would be a big loss. So it, it, plainly, for me, the benefits of moving slower is just having a little bit more wisdom about what's going on, do you know what I mean? Having a little bit more time to work out how the games are working, so by the time you do get there, you know how to protect what you've got and how to keep it going. What do you think of the internet? And how, how the internet has affected the scene? And obviously there's all these websites that everyone's logged on to every day with the up-to-date news so all the kids, everyone's a lot more clued up with what's going on, you know. In that sense it's good and you've got the whole, in, for us, like the instant messenger thing, hearing what everyone is making, like kind of up front. Whenever we have anything we'll like choose two people to maybe to test the tune out with, you know, say Riley and Marcus or Brian and Fabio and um, see what your reaction is from there and then like, kind of send it to another couple of people and send it to Mark in Brazil we'll have feedback the next day which is brilliant you know? mm. same thing with Pendulum once I remember sending him the track Concord Dawn before I went to bed when I woke up in the morning I was saying yeah I smashed it in mm -hmm. Australia in New Zealand I was like oh wicked and we only finished the track that day and it's like it's always been played out on the other side of the world you know? and that's great <laughs> are you happy with the state of the scene currently I think, I think the scene's healthy at the moment I think London could do with an injection of some vibes again somehow. Definitely, yeah. Yeah. 
the industry is getting to a point now where they're protecting artists more now, you know. People can't just get ripped off so easy, you know. People ain't just taking it for granted and running off with people's money. People realise that the future is in the youth, you know. And you can't just bring them through and rip them off, otherwise we will not have a, a, a scene left anymore, you know what I mean? Still, I think the whole DJ pricing thing is killing it a bit, you know. In what sense? In what sense? Won't name any nights where you have like 10, 10 expensive DJs paying for so much money, and then it's a certain amount of money on the door, a certain price at the door. I mean, it's, it's unfair. It's, it's unfair to the punter, and I reckon it's, you know, you just get certain people that will go that are willing to pay that price. And what are you using in the studio? Uh, all the outboard stuff. Yeah. One that's some dinosaur set up at the moment. <laughs> Everyone's on their little G5s and G5 is your Logic Pro, which is all a good thing. <coughs> it's the young ones in, everyone can start you know, contributing. And we got, um, we're just basically using uh, mainly an Emu 64 Ultra alongside Cubase as a sequence, so we don't even use no audio in there really. Right. There's a couple of synthesizers and effects and compression stuff like that. Yeah. What else can we expect over the next year or so? I think we might try and at some point do some kind of EP that might have a few different styles on that one EP for me or something. And in the future, probably mm -hmm. far on into this year, we'll be thinking yeah. about an album. Yeah, album mm -hmm. Release. <laughs> <Remix. laughs> Get that in the shop. <laughs> Trick Me Remix. Trick Me Remix, which has kind of smashed it for us, really, and has got us a lot of that. So that's the official remix? That's yeah. the official remix, and they were kind of blown away for it, so we need more work. So that's opened up a lot of doors for us. Did you get headhunted to do the Khalees remix? I'm a Khalees fan and um, I've got all our albums and I've got a latest one and we'd already done that Cutty Ranks uh, slamming remix Same. for EMI and I saw that she was kind of going through EMI with the album and there was one specific track I liked on the album that I thought we could do a good job of. So I thought I told Glenn to make a couple of calls and see if we could get something on the off chance. And um, they was like, that's not the track we're doing off of the album as the next 12. Um, they goes have a listen to this one and it was, wasn't even one of my favourite ones to be honest but you know to be offered that and then they, was, uh, they also said that they hadn't really heard much of what we'd done so we sent them some of our stuff and they really liked it and they obviously talked to the people within EMI that we'd done the other remix for and that done really well do you know what I mean it got played by top DJs even yeah, house well. DJs jumped on it so yeah now. so they obviously gave them good feedback and they was like roll with it and so we had to wait for about a week for Khalees to listen to it yeah. and, like, <laughs> and get her go ahead like yeah, and then you know, apparently she really really liked it so.